You know, it's so funny to me, spending 23 years in a corporate setting and transitioning to entrepreneurship, y'all, it was not easy. (laughs) And I don't know what I was thinking. Like, did I actually think that it would be easy? Because I think sometimes when you're in corporate for so long, you just think, oh my God, anything but this would be a breath of fresh air, right? And you're like, I work so hard as it is. I, I was on call all the time in my past job before I left that to have my own business. And I was chief of public affairs for an elected official. And I was like on call and I had every 15 to 30 minutes of my calendar was completely booked all the time with somebody else having management of my schedule and calendar and that kind of thing. And, and then, you know, you transition from having all of that to, and having a team and having someone in your office. And I had an an, an assistant and all of the things (laughs) to it's like, now I have to, I mean, it's so funny. I tease my husband all the time. I'm like, I am my own in-house IT. I am my own in-house graphic design shop. Like I am my own in-house. I know how to do everything on my website. You know, there's not the guy or gal down the, you know, down the hall that you can go talk to, to say, Hey, you know, can you help me? Cause my website isn't working. You just have to YouTube all this stuff y'all. I mean, it's just crazy. And so it's like, I didn't even, and think about those kinds of things, the daily rigamen role, if you will, um, when I was in my corporate setting, you know? And so it's just, it's harder working by yourself for so many reasons. A, you don't have access to the resources that you did in the corporate world, right? But B, and I would say this is probably the even bigger one for me is that I had no one to collaborate with much less talk to, to bounce ideas, you know, and it's so funny because I talked to my husband a lot in the beginning and I got frustrated with that because, and it, and it hit me. I was just like, I'm talking to someone who a doesn't really understand what it is that I'm trying to do in this online space, you know, and much less marketing, um, and communications, because that's what I do. I mean, he's an accountant and I don't ask him about accounting. St- I mean, that's, that's his, you know, area of expertise. Mine is communications and marketing. And so the value that he could give me to give me, um, the type of feedback that I needed for resources that I was putting together, how I was going to communicate with clients or whatever. That was not his area of expertise, but he was my only person. So I was going to the one person that I thought who could provide me what I, you know, the feedback that I needed. Oh, and by the way, he wasn't even my ideal client. So, you know, it just, it was, it was so hard. It was so hard. So, you know, it was so funny because within the first year ish or so of um, being in business, And in the online space, keep in mind, let me just give you a quick timeline as to when I started my business. So I had my job job well up until December of 2019. And I went out on my own January of 20. We moved to the Dallas area from Oklahoma. So I was in a brand new market. I'm, I was 45 years old, didn't know anyone here in Dallas. Um, And then eight weeks later, the world shut down. And so it was I think a train wreck might be the best way to describe it. It was a total freaking train wreck. And so, you know, just trying to figure out, you know, while the world is shut down and everybody's in quarantine and lockdown and trying to figure out who my friends are going to be and my support system is going to be, because I quickly found that, you know, my husband, again, as much as I love him, he could not give me the type of support that I needed to really grow my ideas and grow my business the way that I wanted to and the way that I felt called to as well, too. Right. So, um, I had to find my people. And so, you know, I encourage you finding your people is huge if you want to have any success in business and, and, you know, and it's still hard because I've got my people to share my good and bad days with, and they understand because they're in the same boat, but yet they're not here with me on a daily basis. So, I mean, you really do have to get into a space where you can manage your mind, manage your thoughts and emotions and that kind of thing. And because I'm telling you this entrepreneurship roller coaster, it is exactly that it is it is, it is the wildest roller coaster ride you will ever be on. And so I encourage you, you have to find those people who get it, find those people who have been there, done that, who can help hold your hand, even if they're just a few months along in business than you are. Let me tell you someone who 
it is like that is invaluable. Okay. So, you know, the other thing that I want to add to this conversation as well, too, is if you're looking for, you know, we've all heard about external validation, right? And if you're looking for external validation from a partner or spouse who isn't an entrepreneur, you're going to be disappointed all the time. You just will be. And again, this isn't a slam on anybody or anything. It's just, it, it's just something that you, you have to understand and have to be aware of as you're, as you're getting into it. Um, and that external validation, I look at it like this, you know, my husband will come home and he'll talk about, you know, interactions that he would have had with people at his office and some of his partners and, um, you know, colleagues and people that work for him and that kind of thing. And he'll, you know, he gets 360 evaluation once a year, right? And so he'll find out, um, you know, how people are feeling about his performance as the boss and he's really good at what he does. So he gets a lot of positive feedback about, you know, how people really like working with him and for him and that kind of thing. And that is external validation. When someone else is saying, hey, I really like this. I really like what you're doing. And when you're in a workplace setting, like in corporate or even if you're working for a nonprofit or whatever, you know, if you're in a workplace setting, setting where there's at least five plus people, the chances that you're going to get that external validation to, for you to know, Hey, I'm headed in the right direction. I'm doing the right thing. People are liking the work that I'm doing. It happens when you're in a workplace setting. It just does. And when you are working alone, it's like, you only have yourself to give yourself that pat on the back. I remember last week I got asked to be on a podcast with Mark Degrassi. He's awesome. And I love his podcast at the digital marketer podcast. So go listen to it. If you, if you're not subscribed to it already. Uh, but anyway, Mark reached out and he was just like, Hey, I want you to be on my podcast. And I was like, cool, this is awesome. And I was talking to my husband about it and a couple of days later, because I knew that he wasn't going to be as excited about it as I was. And because I, he doesn't understand the scope of everything that Mark does. Because Mark is, you know, the digital marketer podcast. I mean, that's really in, that's in my area of expertise. So th those are going to be the types of podcasts and, and learning environments that I'm going to be a little bit more tied into than my husband would, for example. Right. So you know, getting invited to be on his podcast is a big stinking deal. And I just kind of had, had to go, go Heather, you rock. You did so good getting on this podcast. Y'all, I know this sounds so freaking lame and you're laughing at me going, okay, y'all, this is, this is a little goofy, but it's the truth. You only have yourself to really go, okay, this was a really good day. This was a really good thing that happened. I am doing really good work. I mean, that external val validation validation. I mean, let's be honest in the corporate world, we really enjoyed that and transitioning to the entrepreneurship world. It's a little tricky. It's harder. Okay. So my advice for you when it comes to battling the head trash that we all have, I mean, we all tell ourselves nasty things, right? We just do. I know we do, but my advice is to find your people who can be a good support system and learn how to be your own cheerleader. And I'm going to tell you what I do. Okay. So here's my pro tip. I am my own cheerleader and it, because I write down on the days that, um, something really awesome happens, I will write that down in my calendar. I actually have a written planner and i of course, keep everything on my phone too, but my planner is what I keep with me all the time. And so I will actually physically write down a note to myself about that awesome thing that happened that day, because inevitably the next day or two days after that, there will be something really crappy that happens. And you're just thinking to yourself, I'm not cut out for this. And I'm just not as good as the next person. And da, da, da. you know, you tell yourself all these horrible things, right? But I go back and I read those great things on the days that I have a crappy day. That, that is the one thing that I do that I've been very intentional about. I mean, y'all, I am not the type to, you know, I've never been a braggadocious type person at all. And so, but you have to, you have to brag on yourself because no one else is going to brag on you for you. Okay. So write down the good things and then force yourself to go back and read those great things when you're having a crap day. All right. So find your people, find the people that resonate. And I'll give you a tip on how to find those people too. When you're scrolling through Instagram late at night and you find certain accounts, you're like, man, that girl looks cool. I like what she's saying or whatever. 
man, I'm telling you, DM that person and just say, Hey, your content, it really landed with me. And I really, I really enjoy it. And I'm telling you, you will not even begin to understand the gravity that just having an interaction will have in your business. Because when you develop that support system, it just makes all the difference in the world. Okay. So find your people, write down the good things and be intentional about not getting into that downward spiral on the bad days and read those good things that are happening, because I promise you, it will help keep you grounded. And that's what we all want. So I hope you found some good value out of this little episode, this quick episode, please feel free to share it with people that you might think get some, uh, you know, derive some benefit from it as well too. And until next time, We'll see ya.